Okay, well, hello again. Uh, some of you might have seen the other word hours that we were looking at uh, one like a son of man, looking at Mark's gospel, which is a wonderful uh, uh, study. Uh, so do do uh, get hold of those that are available. Um, but we're beginning a new uh, course. So anybody who, who else has got the book there? Uh, usually Jenny's got a copy of it, but we're usually looking at it. <laughs> it's called The Out of the Storm. Uh, it's a book written by Richard George, who, who directs The Way of the Spirit. And um, and so we're going to be looking at that in, in over three sessions now. We're going to start by looking at uh, the first couple of uh, sections there, uh, and then again in a, in a month's time, and then again after that we'll we'll look at that. And but to do advise you, if you you know get hold of this book, uh, as all of the resources are available from the Way of the Spirit, thewayofthespirit.com. And if you look on there, there's a web shop, and you can get hold of all these resources, and they're they're excellent. And I believe it will really truly bless you. So. Um, and we pray that you'll get blessed tonight. So uh, out of the storm. So what's all of that about? Well, um, yes, it's really something that uh, all of us experience, uh, whether we're Christians or not, really doesn't matter. We're going to go through storms. And so these two chapters we're going to look at tonight, they detail Jonah. Now, you've probably heard of Jonah, uh, the one who, who gets uh, swallowed by a sardine um, or whale or whatever type. It doesn't say what type of fish it was. But uh, so we're looking at Jonah. And he goes through what we might call a self-inflicted storm. Uh, and then we're going to look after Jonah. We're going to look at Paul, who goes through a storm uh, because he's following hard after God. Uh, and there's going to be a big difference there and a big comparison between uh, Jonah and through Paul the Apostle. Uh, now, storms, uh, just uh, to kind of like set the scene, they're actually a metaphor uh, for all the chaos, the difficulties, the hardship, etc. everything we go through in life. Really, they're a metaphor. Uh, storms. Well, there's one going on right now, actually, uh, that, that uh, as I'm sitting here, there's a big storm going on. Uh, I'm down here in Horsham. I don't know what it's like in Scotland, but uh, um, it's really interesting that it was in a storm uh, as John Wesley was, was returning from America. Uh, he'd gone to convert the Indians and he kind of said, well, I went to convert the Indians, but who will convert me? And he realized his faith was not very deep. Uh, and uh, as he comes back, there's a storm on the ship. Uh, you know, it's about to be shipwrecked and he's ter absolutely terrified. But on board the ship, there were some guys called Moravians um, from a place called Hernhut uh, in uh, Germany. And they were absolutely at peace, singing their songs and no fear whatsoever, because they knew that the Lord was with them and that God was in charge of the outcome. So they were absolute peace. That really shook him up. Uh, and he uh, wondered why they had such a faith. And eventually, of course, it led to his faith and Wesley changed the world. So uh, one scripture, really just to set the scene, John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. That was just a word meaning trouble. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So cheer up. So we're going to start by, um, uh, you know, what the book starts by looking at is uh, the sort of introduction bit. It says that after Jesus calls the disciples, they immediately enter into a storm. Now, as soon as he called them and he said what the cost of being a disciple is going to be, the very next uh, bit that you get uh, in, in Matthew chapter 8 is that the uh, disciples, uh, Jesus is asleep, of course, but the disciples enter into uh, an immediate storm. Um, and so uh that whole theme of storms really really begins there by looking at, at, at that storm they go into which is kind of like a storm because they're actually following jesus uh and uh, uh and obeying him uh but the first one we're going to look at in in great detail is we're going to look at jonah uh so it'd be really useful if uh, uh perhaps mike if you could put up uh um the, one of the scriptures uh, for for the story of jonah Yep, just be one second and we'll show you there. Matthew. This is Matthew. We'll do Jonah. Okay, here we go. Excellent. Uh, okay. Uh, it's fabulous. That's really good. So, Jonah, uh, the prophet. So, um, it says here that the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. Uh, uh, and cry out against it. And of course, Jonah, um, you know, he's obviously a prophet because the word that came to him. But we, we all know the story. Jonah didn't do what God said. He thought he had a better idea, tried to run away to go to Spain. 
uh, probably because he wanted a suntan or something, but but he runs in the opposite direction. And of course, we know that uh, 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 he goes down uh, onto the boat uh, and uh, it's a story of how he just get, his story is he disobeys God is down, 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 down into the boat. As you can see there from the passages, uh, he goes down to Joppa, down into the boat, down into the heart of the boat, falls asleep, probably falling into a great depression. Um, and then, of course, uh, the great storm comes up. Uh, they try to deal with it. But eventually he says, well, I serve the God of heaven. Uh, and eventually he goes into, uh, um, you know, they throw him into the water and we think that's over for him. Uh, Jonah then repents. Uh, he 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 realizes he's in a hard place. But when you've been doing a rock and a hard place, uh, that's a time often that, that, that uh, you, a time for decision to be made. And of course, um, you know, God uses the storm to bring Jonah to the point of repentance. And Jonah finally says, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. I'll do what you're asking me to do, Lord. Um, it's been tough. And of uh, course, the, then the, the big fish uh, vomits him onto the land again. And eventually he does go to Nineveh, uh, which was a very evil, bad city. Uh, and he does, um, you know, bring uh, conviction to the, the people of the city. They all do repent in sackcloth and ashes. Uh, they don't kill him. They don't do anything nasty to him. Uh, but actually, they listen to the word that he says. Uh, so it's a, a very uh, good ending to the story. So that's the introduction, really. So we, we've looked a little bit at uh, the general introduction uh, and then the story of Jonah. And what we're going to do now uh, as a group, uh, this is how Where the Spirit groups work. Uh, we do our reading at home. We answer some questions. And what we're going to do now as a team, we're just going to look at some of the questions uh, related to the introduction there. Uh, from Matthew's Gospel, uh, and also to look at um, the story of Jonah. So, um, uh, Jenny, could you read out the uh, question number one? Um, question. The Matthew uh, question, yeah. That's it, yeah, page 36 of the booklet. Should be, yep. it hasn't changed. Right. <laughs> no. Uh, what is the passage in Matthew about? Um, it's the... that's just the question isn't it how would you yeah what is it sorry <laughs> number one um is that just the one that says what is the passage yes. of Matthew about yeah yeah that's right it says ignore the subheadings and it's Matthew chapter uh eight verses 18 to 27 uh -huh. uh, which Mike, Mike is kindly putting up for us there you uh, go 18 uh, yeah excellent so yeah you can see there, look, uh, when Jesus saw the multitudes, he gave command to depart. So so and then he talks about foxes have holes and birds, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. He's then, then laying in the boat. So, yeah, what's the passage about? Jenny, could you sort of say something about what what, uh, what you well, felt the passage was about? What I thought it might have been is about putting our faith and trust in God. Um, as a Christian, we'll most definitely have storms in our lives. but when you're following the Lamb, or Jesus, God, wherever he goes, it wouldn't be an easy life unless we totally surrender to Jesus. Yes. I think that's what Jonah had to do. Uh, he had to acknowledge that the Lord doesn't change his plans to suit you. You've got to go when he calls you, and uh, it'll always be hard, but it'll be manageable when you're within the Lord's will, you know, yes. which he wasn't to begin with. No, that's right. What? Yeah, that's great. Uh, one of the um, comments just on that particular passage is that, of course, Jesus had called his disciples to follow him and they were getting to know him, whether uh, in miracles and his authority. But then when they were obviously in the in the storm, they, for the most part, allowed Jesus to sleep. They did not bother. And they thought, I, I, when I think about the passage, I think, well, uh, we're OK. I mean, we can manage this storm because we don't need Jesus to help us, you know, let him sleep. And it came to the point where that they were at the point of drowning, it would seem, when they thought, wow, we do need Jesus. And it's almost like it was too late because they thought, well, we're going to drown together. And they cried out at that point. So they left it so late before they called on Christ, on the Lord. And sometimes mm -hmm. we can make that same mistake. We can sort of, oh, we can manage this. You know, 
And we only come to the Lord when we're in a kind of a desperate position and cry out at that point. Yeah. Actually, so often the Lord helps us and intervenes. But sometimes it's almost like Jesus can say, to, why didn't you not ask, let me help you earlier? Why did you not ask me? And they left it to this kind of lateness. Yes. But then, of course, they discovered yeah. who Jesus is through that. Yes, very good. Yes, and actually, yeah, that's, that's such a good point because um, often we can do things in our own strength. We think visit, yeah. quite a few of those disciples were fishermen. They, they thought they knew, they knew the lake, they knew what to do. Uh, and it's that self-sufficiency, isn't it, really? Yeah. Uh, and then we have to learn that to dependence on God. Yeah, that's great. Um, so if we move on to the next question, uh, um, uh, Karen, could you read the next sort of part of the question? How would you feel that bit? So how would you feel if you were, were the man whose father had recently died and you heard Jesus say to you this to you? What do you think Jesus meant? Yes, and there's the scripture there. You can see uh, mm -hmm. Mike's illustrating there. Um, you know, let me go and bury my father first. So... What's your thoughts on that, Karen? Well, I think it's particularly difficult to walk with Christ. It's not an easy walk. It costs you everything. Mm. And if you're actually living a prophetic lifestyle and living your life for Jesus, um, which we'll go on to later in chapter 724, that was something that was said in the book that was quite significant, which I would quite like to talk about when we get to that point. But there is a real cost in following Jesus. It's, and first of all he's to be your all isn't he that jesus is to be the first and everything else is to take second place to that and sometimes it costs to follow jesus there's a real cost in following jesus um, so for me i that's it's important that you don't put any other idols first before god you know that that is secondary because just like jonah he put the idol of himself first didn't he? and what happened he went down 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 and that's what we, and the disciples as well, they said, oh, we can do this ourselves. So they made themselves greater than God, down, down them, and then cried out to God. Um, and that's, you know, but ultimately you put God first and everything else comes into line with that, doesn't it? And really and truly that's what we should do um, with Jesus, putting him number one, making him our top priority, really. Yes, that's really good. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think it, it's to do with priorities, isn't it, really? And I guess Jesus is using that kind of Jewish way of making things very kind of extreme, you know. Um, like, you know, um, you, you've got to be 100%. But but it was Jesus was very black and white in it. He's actually mm -hmm. saying, after you were saying, as it says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God, everything else will be added. And if we do put God first, uh, then he promises that he'll, I'll work out all the other details of uh, things in your life. So that's good, isn't it? Uh, yeah, great. Jenny, have you got any comments on that one? Um, well, I was looking at it, uh, as it said, bury my father, and I looked at the different translations and the Amplified Bible says, after bury my father, it says, collect my inheritance. So presumably ah. my father had died already as it would be the Jewish custom, he would be sort of probably buried immediately. But he was uh, procrastinating and waiting for the inheritance and the financial gain to sort right. of probably tie up all his affairs before. He, he felt maybe the call of Jesus was too quick, maybe, and he was kind of looking for excuses, maybe. I don't know. But yeah. uh, ah. I think it has something to do with that, how yeah. we all get bogged down. But, but what about my house? What about my family but jesus goes i'll take care of all that and you yes. just got accept it yeah yeah no, that's really good thank you jenny yeah fantastic mike have you got any comments on that one or should we move on to the next question again just it's the same thing of just that that commitment he, he is above everything yeah. yes i don't yeah. think you know i mean obviously if a, a person dies i mean you deal with that situation but obviously and then uh, you don't abandon the, the the dead, you know, the burial and all the, the things that you need to do. I think that's something no. to be careful about. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, but then the commitment is is total. Yeah. Yes. So right. can I just come in with a question, if that's all right? So we're yes. talking about that. So clearly your priority is that Jesus is first and that you should put him number one. However, doesn't the devil always attack you with the idols that are in your life? So families or whatever is top priority mm -hmm. to make you not follow Jesus. And really what you're saying, Robert, is black and white. Um, are you going to choose to allow God to be the God of gods in your life or are you going to choose to put the other idols in your life first, really? 
Um, yeah. And you've tested, that's a storm, isn't it? It's a storm as well. And something comes along in your life that you, maybe your health or something else that you're actually mingling and putting your thoughts on before God, isn't it? You're at, so the, the man that was, he put his de- the dead person, and I get what you're saying, Mike, but God's actually asking, are you going to put me, Lord of Lords, over everything over your life as well? Not just, um, do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying here? <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, she, yeah, that um, definitely is. No, I was just got to see when families are involved, it's not only, uh, it's the emotional ties that really you struggle with. I think to let go if the Lord wants you yes. to follow Him, you know. Um, if families yes. put you on guilt trips or whatever, I'm not talking about my family in particular, just in general, it can be really hard. Yeah. You know? yes. Yeah, but yes. are you going to listen to God, or are you going to listen to the circumstances and the storm? So what well, are you going to decide to I, do in that well, storm? It would be God, and then God would calm the storms about you for obedience, you know. Yeah. It comes or out of your work, action, doesn't it? Helps you work through them, maybe, than calm them, you know. Yeah, if them would yeah. fall into a line with his divine plan. Yeah. Yes. In, in, the, in the nature of commitment, though, isn't it? I mean, it's when you... Uh, that which is dearest to you, obviously, you know, Jesus had with the rich young ruler, when it for him, go and sell what you have. It was money. And obviously we know that money is one of the biggest, biggest things that keeps people from following Christ. Uh, And then I thought of Abraham. And of course, with Abraham, it was Isaac, his dearly beloved Mm -hmm. son. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's when that challenge comes in, which often it does. I mean, that is, if you like, a storm of turmoil and conflict, when Mm -hmm. that which is really precious to us, to surrender. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that laying down, as we say, on the altar. Now, it's fine when there's no emotional attachment. But when you've got that deep attachment, I mean, I think, is it uh, Hudson Taylor? uh, When he was going to, you know, he had the call to go to China. And this girl, I think it was Sarah or something she's called. And uh, she says, look, I love you, Hudson. And, you, you know, we'll get married, have a great life, serve the Lord together. But I'm not going to China. Oh, see, and that yeah. sense of when well, we know God is calling us to actually surrender at that point, and that's a massive challenge mm-hmm. by God's exactly. grace. So, Hopefully, we can yeah, do it. Yes. So, yeah, Mike, what I get from a lot of people it's your actions that's me. So, you can see your by your mouth, my health is not important to me, but how are you, how is your actions going to react to that in that storm? But you're going through maybe cancer treatment or heart treatment or anything. What are you seeing in that storm? Who are you seeing that's Lord at that point in the storm? Is it is it Jesus or is it actually the condition? It's by your actions. It's the demonstration of how you respond to it. Not saying, I'm in the storm and I believe this, but my actions are completely different. It's your actions well, actually display how much you believe in putting God number one in that circumstance. Yeah, I mean, one of the interesting, another missionary one, because I do these missionary stories, you know, C.T. Studd. He had, I think he had terrible asthma. And so the mission board wouldn't send him out. I don't know if he was going to China at that point, too, because he did China and India. But they wouldn't support him because of his health. But it says he knew God wanted him to go, even though he was obviously coughing and spluttering or whatever. But he knew if you know if you know God is guiding you to do it, even though you may not be 100 percent, then you trust God in that. That's but right. obviously that's yes. a, an interesting Yes, I think that's good. Part is when God takes you right up to the wire, though, and you're like dangling between life or death, and that, and it it really tests your faith. Then I suppose in a way you have to surrender because you've got nothing else you can do at that point. But it's when you're sort of more complacent in that. Um, I've lost my train of thought, but it's uh, basically yeah, when the chips are down, what you're going to do, you know, and and you're worried about your finances or you're worried about your health. And uh, you can only see it from a human point of view. It's hard to sort of totally depend on the Lord, you know. But yeah. that's what we yeah. must. That's what we must do, and that's we're going to see that. Yes, it is. It's our faith, isn't it, that gets tested, and and I guess that's what storms are about. That metaphor of storm mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. circumstances. Circumstances may be good, they may be bad. Paul said he'd learned to be content in all circumstances. So it's a question of whether. You know, it's that developing of our faith that will we trust that 
uh, you know, as we, we've listened to God, we're following God, doing what he's asking, whatever we go through, uh, will our faith stay strong in that circumstance or, or will our faith fail? Um, actually, we, so we can move on now. I mean, there was a, another question about uh, comparing the call of Jesus of the disciples to the call of uh, Elisha from Elijah. Uh, but uh, that's something you look at at home. But why don't we move on then? Because that naturally comes into the next question. Mm -hmm. uh, question two. Um, and so question two is Matthew chapter seven. Um, and it's verses uh, uh, 24 to 29. Um, and uh, I'll just say what the question is. Uh, this is the passage really that talks about the wise and foolish builders, uh, which is a very, very familiar passage, of course. Everybody knows about it. Um, and um, it's, uh, you know, the wise man, you know, we were singing the song in Sunday school, don't we? The wise man built his house upon the rock. Wise man built his, <laughs> uh, and so on. So uh, that's really the passage. But it kind of ties in really where Jenny left us off there, um, because actually... Um, we often think of you know Jesus as being the rock, but uh, we'll have a look at that and see, uh, is this passage just saying that Jesus is the rock and stand on Jesus, or is it maybe saying something uh, a little bit uh, different? Um, so uh, let's start us off then. Um, uh, Mike, can you answer the, the question, the first part of the question, which is, what is the precise difference between the wise and the foolish builder? Well, of course, with the... Uh... Well, the man who built his house on the rock, um, he was, if you like, there was a preparation, there was an understanding of, of what to do. I mean, I think sometimes in this context, slightly different. But when Jesus speaks about the children of this, of the world are wiser than the children of light, so to speak. In other words, sometimes as Christians, we don't think things through and we don't uh prepare or we don't do you know get things uh done decently in order if you like and because of that uh when a storm comes then we're not prepared uh just like we're talking there about the disciples in the storm they they didn't ex prepare get jesus to help them as they were as that storm came but they left it almost too late and sometimes i know that come by with procrastination. We can put off things mm -hmm. and we don't prepare as we should. Whereas, of course, the other person there, uh, as Jesus speaks about, he, he just didn't bother. He didn't uh, prepare. He didn't take heed. He didn't take warning. He didn't, you know, and of course, we are talking about things of eternity. You know, like Jesus says about lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. There's a sense where we need to prepare, not so much, for this life but prepare for eternity because all things that we do are going to be judged and weighed and so we need to do things for the glory of god and not really for our own benefit which is so mm. often the case and that becomes even as a christian we can be like the foolish man if we don't do things for the glory of god and to seek to serve and put him first mm. yes that's right. Yes, it is. So I, I think really, in a way, it's saying, look, the guy that prepares really well and builds his house uh, in the right way uh, is the person who's kind of day to day living their life, uh, mm -hmm. building uh, a bit like Moses when mm -hmm. he built the tabernacle. It says he he built everything according to the pattern that was shown him on the mountain. And he did everything exactly as God showed him. And because mm -hmm. he did. Uh, eventually the tabernacle was built which it tells us in exodus 40 and then it says it was filled with the glory of god uh, and i guess there's somebody who's really done things the right way uh, and then god's glory comes and it fills it um all this if we live our lives maybe in 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 not the right way uh then we're not going to have the outcome that god desires for our life um Karen, would you like to say anything uh, on that one yeah so can i just share something that i read in the book which really stuck out to me big yeah, time too. so it said in page three of out of the storm those who live their lives listening for and hearing then doing what god says are the ones who build on the rock the rock here is not christ but doing what christ says doing what christ says to be upon the rock is to hear his word and put them into practice to obey God's word is key, not merely to hear them. We are called not merely to listen and give mental ascension, 
but to live our lives by them, to choose to believe them, letting them determine the direction of the steps we take. So, so often we hear God speaking to us, just what you were saying, Mike. So God does prepare you for the storm. You're in the word, he's learning you and he's taking you. You're right in the storm. But what do we do? We end up giving mental ascension to it. So we work it out and think about it and all the rest of it and put our slant on it. But really and truly, if we live our lives and choose to believe them, choose what God's saying to us, and let that determine our steps. We'll be in the storm, but we'll be able to stand in the storm because we'll have courageous faith to do it, just like Paul did, because we're not given mental assent to it. And so often, this, when God speaks to us, we sit and mental assent to it and put our slant on it rather than just simply doing what he says, to choose to believe. So we're believing God what you're saying, and we're letting you determine that direction we're going. So whether we're in a storm or not, we're following the Lord no matter what, where he takes us. So we're able to stand strong and not, not like, so John, Jonah put mental ascension on it, didn't he? Went down, down, down. That's what happens if you put your own slant on it and work it out rather than just simply following the Lord and his direction. It really struck me that quote. Mm, yes, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, and then really you've moved on to the next part of the question, which was, what are you building your life upon? Um, so uh, very much so. Um, it's how we're living that daily day-to-day life and uh, and as you say it's a life of of listening and hearing and, and doing and there's an interesting scripture in deuteronomy chapter 29 20 verse 29 which we we love to repeat in the way of the spirit which is this that the the secret things belong to the lord our god but the things revealed so that's what we hear in listening to god as reading the word the things revealed belong to us and our children that we may do all the words of the, the this law so in other words, the things that, you know, that they're revealed and it's wonderful to get revelation and to hear from God. Um, but we can't sort of just say, oh, I heard from God and, and write it down and sort of put it on our uh, on our, our wall and, and look at it and think, oh, wasn't that wonderful? Uh, that's what God spoke to me. But it's actually, um, you know, putting the word into practice. Um, and, and that's really what the, uh, you know, the rock is. Uh, did you want to say something about that, Jenny, Jennifer? The, the, um, uh... Jenny's fine. <laughs> um well, I, this might be controversial, but it was just as I was looking at this, thinking about the pers- the foolish person listens but doesn't do the doing, I thought, could that be somebody that's more immersed in the word and not enough of the spirit? And could the obedient person be the one that's got a mixture of the, the word and the spirit, the whole ethos of the way of the spirit? Um, I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting point, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very interesting point. Yeah, somebody, you know, why are they not? I mean, that's the question, isn't it? Why is someone not doing? If we're mm-hmm. hearing, why are we not doing? Is it fear? Then, yeah. uh, you know, why are we holding back? Is it fact that, that we're not empowered by the Holy Spirit? Um, yeah. Because he gives us the courage and boldness to move forward in things. Uh-huh. Yeah, good, good point. Because when you sung it at Sunday school, as I did as well, you almost thought it was yes. a believer <laughs> and an unbeliever, but it's, <laughs> it's deeper than that as always yes. is the way you know yeah yes except actually although it might be not a non-believer or believer it might actually be whether we as a christian are full of faith or whether we're full mm-hmm. of unbelief mm-hmm. uh, maybe you know because um you know if we really if we know god and we really know his word uh, then we will have faith and our response to his word won't be one of unbelief uh, like it says in hebrews chapter four you know they couldn't enter the promised land because of unbelief and it also speaks about that being as the same as hardness of heart. So that's uh-huh. interesting, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, and the last part of that question there, that then, and uh, before we move on to look at Jonah, um, how would you help people in storms? If you were or are a pastor, what does this passage say about your role? So, uh, Karen, what would you say about uh, helping <laughs> people in storms? Uh, how would you help them? Um, well, being in many storms and being hearing from Richard many times is that you're he puts you in the right direction but it leaves you to get on with, it, with you and the Lord to get, really just deal with it um, and that is the right way to do it because you have to get so sometimes when you're in that storm it's not to look to man but look to God isn't it to go to Christ yeah. and go through the cross of Christ yes. and obediently yes. follow him through it all yeah. so no matter what you're in the storm the, yes the pastor will encourage you but it's it's for you to be in that place and for you to go yes. through that storm with Jesus, not looking to the pastor to hold your hand because the pastor won't be able yes. to hold your hand because you're no. the one that's in the storm. You need to hear from God 
and you need to obediently follow God in that storm. So, that's, yeah. uh, no, that's that was very good. Yeah, otherwise we can just be depend depend on man. And Mike, did you want to just finish off yeah. that off, uh, and then we'll move on to Jonah? Uh huh. Well, again, it's just it's just the fact too, because as we are, you know, going on with the Christian life, as we're saying, it's inevitable that we go through storms, and so by God's grace. We hopefully like that, that, that we're all here today, and those of you who are watching, they're the same thing, and no doubt the storms in life that you've gone through. So it's usually, and of course, I think in its second Corinthians, isn't it? It's one, it speaks about we help others with the help that we ourselves receive. So, how we have managed to overcome, or even what mistakes we made then we can share with someone who's going through maybe a similar situation, maybe going through like health or divorce or children. I mean, where there is a, a real conflict and they're asking, how do I manage this? Well, if by God's grace, we have come through that type of situation, then of course we can help them with the way that God has helped us or the Lord has helped us. And whether we're younger, whether we're older, I mean, that, that can be the case as well. Obviously, the older we get, there's kind of more storms that perhaps we've been through. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we all are even to help and encourage each other. I mean, that's what Paul did as we get on to the next questions later that's on. Right. Yeah, yeah but there's a point of encouragement, isn't there, Mike? And there's a point where you need to direct. People need to get it from the word of God the spirit mm -hmm. of god it's the word that sets people free it's a set because you could end up just becoming a person that's there they go to you rather than go to jesus rather than go to the word rather than listen to the holy spirit people need to do you know when you're in that storm i know when i've been in storms i'm not looking i'm looking to the word of god to get me through this storm i'm looking to hear what jesus is saying to me and yes i get what you're saying about the pastor being there but the pastor shouldn't be the default. The default should be Jesus and the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. That's where you, you should be going to look for your answer because it's God, the Holy Spirit is going to give you that answer. Mm -hmm. I get That's what right. you're saying. I understand what you're saying about a yeah. pastor, but it, sometimes people just go to a pastor straight away rather. Do you know what I mean? And they're at, at the, the minister every Sunday with the same problem. Next yes. week, they're back at the minister with the same problem. Yes. They're back at the minister a year later with the same problem yes. because they've not went right. to the word of God and they've not listened to the yes. Holy Spirit. So, you yeah. know, you need to yeah. you need to be, as if for a storm, it's what we talked about earlier on, that you get the, you are already in the word of God. You're all already listening. So you've trained yourself up as a disciple to be ready to be in that storm, to know, gosh, I'm in this storm. I've been in this storm before, but I know where I got my answer from, the word of God. It is the Spirit of God that did it, not Pastor Brian at Newton Mayor Baptist Church. Do you know what I mean? Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, I hope that's it, it may be listening oh, to you, Karen, here. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Any last well, that's, well, that's, so. that, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, you're absolutely right. We, we need to move on to maturity as Christians. And, uh, okay, you start maybe, uh, you know, with, with, with man, but we all need always need to end with God. So that's great. Well, let's move on to Jonah now. Um, so, you know, we've outlined the story. I think we all know the uh story very very well um and um i think we'll just um do this uh slightly differently and what we'll say is that um uh if uh, maybe um if you could put up the story there uh, uh, of uh, jonah one first chapter one verses one to six mike um and um i'll just go through the quick questions but uh then we can just discuss what what we feel would be the right thing so jonah one uh, verses one to six um the first question is, why did Jonah run away from God's command? We can think about that. Uh, what would you have done? Uh, then the second part of the question is, have you have you ever run away and when? So we can, might read it in the Bible, but uh, have we ever done that? And, and, and when have we done that? And then it says, where did the storm come from? Compare Jonah's responses uh, in the storm to Jesus during the storm on Lake of Galilee. So looking at Jonah and then comparing with with Jesus. So uh, we can look at perhaps uh, those um, three little sort of sub questions there and, and just anything that we'd like to say about that section there. So it's basically Jonah running away and the storm happening. And uh, as we can see there from the, the passage that Mike's kindly put up for us. Uh, and of course, uh, he goes into a, a great depression, really, I think. Um, so, yeah, uh, anyone would like to make a comment on that uh, passage? I know. Sometimes you kind of look into the reason why Jonah would do this and 
again, depending on the interpretation that you think relating to Jonah, Jonah was a, perhaps a very strong nationalist in the sense of for Israel. And he realized, and maybe this is relevant in what's happening, he realized that Israel was doing wrong. They were in an idolatrous situation. And he knew that Nineveh, a very wicked city, was almost being used by God to some degree to uh, inflict not so much punishment, but uh, he knew that they could bring, uh, they could invade they could invade uh, Israel. That was a very real possibility. And there is some thought that Jonah, knowing the heart of God, that if he was going with a message of repentance, then they could repent and God would do what he eventually did do in that spare them. And maybe there was a sense in Jonah's heart, an attitude of enmity. Uh, towards the people of Nineveh and so maybe he did almost want God to punish them because they're such a bad evil people God should punish them so he maybe had a problem with his attitude and with his own prejudice and that was maybe one of the reasons why he did what he did um, yes interesting good um, Mike thank you for that yeah it was a very interesting background really to some of the motives perhaps that uh uh, led because you know we're complex as human beings and all sorts of motives why we do or don't do things that perhaps we should or shouldn't do uh and um and so that's kind of an interesting thing but jenny have you got anything that you'd like to sort of say about those those questions on page 38 well i just genuinely thought he was terrified and didn't feel equipped because it said the uh, in the podcast that jews don't go out to meet converts even to this point today so they certainly didn't do then uh, what he was being asked to do and I think I probably would have done the same as him and run away. It was a big ask. Um, and it sounds like it was like going for um, Israel into Gaza, the way that they described the people of Nineveh at that point, you know, or, well, I, I don't know, I get into politics, but um, it was it was certainly going into the lion's den. So can, you can understand why he tried to go to Spain instead, totally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a really good way of it, the going into the lion's den. It must have felt a bit like that. So, yeah, that's another mm -hmm. thing, you know, uh, that either motivates or demotivates us. Of course, fear is a very big thing, I think, in in, in many people's lives, you know, phobias of various uh, things. So, Karen, how about you? How about uh, any uh, thing you'd like to bring forth from, the, from those questions? Just any basically, really aren't, uh, nothing particular, just similar to Mike, just these attitude rules, you know. And it's what, yes. true what you're saying, though, Robert. The fear of man can stop you doing stuff, can it? So, yes. Fear, yes. fear absolutely can grip you. Yeah, yeah. And well, as the Bible says, really yeah, fear of man is a snare, isn't it, really, every time? So, uh, yeah, that's, that's great. Well, we've been moving on to uh, the next page. We've got to Jonah ch uh, chapter 1, verse 7, which we can see there, uh, and uh, up to v v 3, verse 1. Um, and the questions we had, and then Acts chapter 3, verse 25. Um, the questions we had were, what was God waiting for from Jonah? Uh, which verse brings about the change in Jonah's downward spiral? Because, uh, you know, he gets wrecked and then he ends up going in the sea. And, of course, the, uh, he gets entangled with the seaweed and so on. Uh, where does the change come about? Uh, what's the difference in God's command to Jonah the second time? That's in chapter 3, verse 1. And then how easy it, is it being a prophet? Who are today's prophets? So we've got those questions there. Uh, where does things change for Jonah? Uh, what's the difference in God's command? How does he now, if you like, recommission him to go? And then, you know, we're thinking about being a prophet. Uh, is it easy? And who are today's prophets? So we can have a look at some of that, those thoughts there. I just got uh, like here, I'm just highlighting this, uh, this verse here. In, yes. uh, where it says, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction in the sense and sometimes it can be the case it's when we are afflicted or when we're in real trouble that is when we actually turn to the lord mm -hmm. and it's sadly the case i mean when everything mm -hmm. is fine and dandy so to speak you know we just carry on and maybe the lord's a kind of uh, is you know we respect him we go to church but there's no sense of earnestness in our cry mm -hmm. but now he again recognize the nature of his the consequences he talked about the consequences oh just throw me overboard 
And that sounded to be fine. But really, when he was thrown overboard, the reality of it hit him. And sometimes we speak about things, almost, dare I say it, sometimes people who are depressed and maybe go to maybe commit suicide. And it seems a, an easy way out. But as soon as they enter that place, like if they throw themselves in a river, they try and struggle for life because they kind of recognize almost too late what they have done. And for Jonah, that's how it was. But God had mercy upon him. He says, and he answered me out of the belly of yes. hell or hell. I mean, and God was just yes. so gracious to him. But it was when he was yes. afflicted. Yes. No, that's very good, Mike. And, and and so often it is difficulties for life, the storms, often when perhaps someone dies or whatever, uh, that people do actually get to those points where, you know, bad stuff's happened, where they will finally cry out to God. Mm. Um, you know, it's true perhaps in Christians' lives, but certainly non-Christians, often they will come to faith uh, through storms. And it's interesting, the book of Revelation uh, does say a lot about that, that, uh, uh, you know, God's always wanting, you know, I mean, his desire is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, and often it will be circumstances uh, that God will allow and use uh, to get people to cry out to him and to, uh, um, you know, to, to you know, ultimately to repent, to have a change of heart uh, and to have a, a change of uh, a change of mind. So, yes, thank you for that. Um, Jenny, have you got anything to you'd like to add? The thing that came out to me was the fact that the fish was actually Jonah's provision from God. When I used yeah. to think of the story when I was younger, I always thought that's the worst thing that could happen to him, ending up inside the wheel. But it was the time, uh, once he cried out to the Lord, it was his protection and time for repentance and turning his heart around to God. And it was actually the best part of that scenario for him, actually. That was quite yeah. interesting to know. That's uh, very good. That's very good. Yeah, very good indeed. Uh, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Sometimes we can be in a situation that we actually we want to be set free of from, but actually it's God's provision for us. Sometimes mm -hmm. we're wanting something else, but actually mm -hmm. God's saying, no, this is actually what I'm doing to to protect you and, and watch over you, really. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, challenging, you know, challenging thing, isn't it? That uh, as, as, you know, Jonah gets to that point though, of desperation and uh, uh, the cry of desperation, I, I, I've always found in my own life, always gets very immediate results and i think oh, god's <laughs> often waiting for us to, to get to that point uh, where we really will cry out to him but it would be great if as karen was saying if we lived our life like that uh, we wouldn't need to be get to the point of having to cry out to him because we'd be doing it all the time so uh -huh. that's a good point so um yes so well let's um has anyone else got any comments uh, more comments about jonah uh, we know that things turn around and he eventually does go to Nineveh and and praise god the word comes a second time as it says um and uh and of course, we know that they all do repent. And, and so if you like, it's a happy ending. Uh, and God uses it to really speak to Jonah and to the people of Nineveh. And they do repent. But uh, anyone got any final comments on that before we move on uh, to look at Paul's storm? Just that the difference of the second command was not any different. <laughs> it was the same command. It's just yeah. Jonah was obedient this time. God does not yeah. change his, his uh, direction to suit no. us. Yeah. very good yeah the gift and calling of god are irrevocable aren't they and uh you know it makes me think of Eli elijah when he ran from jezebel uh and he's you know, like going he goes into depression he wants to kill himself basically uh, this is in one kings 18 i think uh, or thereabouts and um and so uh you know he, um he, he goes into that depression um but god what does god do to get him out of it well he just tells him to rest have, have something to eat uh, and he recommissions him just like that. And he says, look, go, go and anoint this king, go and anoint them, go and anoint Elisha. You know, just get on with the job that you've been given to, to, to do. Um, and so that's, I think, really encouraging that sometimes we can blow it, uh, but the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. You know, through repentance, we can get back on track, back on the holy highway uh, and get straight off into the uh, 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 back into God's purposes. So let's move on to Paul then. Uh, Acts chapter 24. Uh, to 27, which Michael kindly uh, put up uh, for us. Um, and so, Karen, would you be able to sort of uh, launch us off? Uh, we're in Acts chapter 24, 27. Uh, Paul is being shipwrecked, basically. Uh, he's been in Rome. Uh, sorry, he's heading towards Rome. Uh, he's been in Caesarea. He's been tried by 
Festus and Agrippa. Uh, he's appealed to Caesar, which you could do. You could appeal to Caesar, who was the greatest power of all, if you were a Roman citizen, which Paul was. He's now, through many circumstances, found himself in this boat. He's actually said to the people, uh, the captain of the boat, don't go on the boat. It's going to there's going to be a storm and it's going to be bad for you. And of course, he's speaking as a prophet, but they don't listen to him, of course, which is sad. Um, and um, and of course, because they didn't listen to him, they go into the most almighty and hor horrendous storm that lasts for about two weeks. Uh, and very similar to the story of Jonah, they start putting things overboard and whatever. Uh, but but Paul uh, is amazing because he really hears from God and says uh, they didn't listen to his first at first, but they do start to respect him and listen to him because uh, he's kind of said, well, I told you this was going to happen. But in the midst of it, uh, he speaks such reassurance and faith to the people uh, that he's with. Uh, it's just amazing uh, with such confidence in God. Uh, an angel even appears to Paul and he says no life is going to be lost. Uh, and in the end, uh, guess who's in charge? Not the captain of the of the uh, garrison that's guarding him, not the captain of the ship, but the one that's actually in control is Paul himself. And, and that makes me think of Jesus in his trial before Pilate. It's not Pilate that's in control. It's not the soldiers that's in control. It's not Caiaphas that's in control. But actually, it was Jesus that's in control. And, and I love that, that when we're walking with God, actually, we were the ones that should be confident in God. And no matter what's going on, uh, we know what the outcome is going to be. So, so yes, Karen, could you kick us off then? Acts 24, 27. Um, what picture do you get of Paul's character from reading these events at sea? What, what does that really make you feel about Paul, uh, Karen? Uh, what comes across about Paul through that whole situation of, of, of being, you know, going to Rome to face Caesar, going to, uh, to through all these situations and the storm, etc.? I think it's uh, maybe it sounds gone there. I Karen, think. can you can you hear us? No, she, can you can hear us, Karen? The sound is coming and going, oh. I believe. Uh, okay, uh, Jenny, how about you, Jenny? What what uh, what, do you, what, um, what do you what do you feel about Paul's character? I think he was amazingly well on in his journey as a believer and follower of Christ. Yeah. He wasn't faced by hardship, misfortune, persecution, or even the warnings of the Holy Spirit that there was dangers ahead. He, I think he was a he had a right heart for people. He was more concerned about the welfare of the men on the ship than his own, even. Uh, and he was strengthened by the prophetic word that they would all be saved and go to Rome. Um, he knew that it's almost it's so weird because he's going to go and be tried in Rome, but he's confident in that knowledge and he makes the most of every situation within the trip to go there and even the outcome itself doesn't sound too good but he's still quite resigned to that fact that he's going to be tried in Rome it's yeah. quite amazing yeah. actually <laughs> yeah yeah a very mature faith isn't it really and uh yeah and so God really ministers to him um how Mike how, how does this storm that Paul goes through Paul's going through uh, God's Paul's have been obeying God, following him. Uh, he's now appealing to Caesar and he's on his way. Uh, how does this storm uh, differ to the storm that Jonah goes through? Yeah, I mean, it's quite interesting because obviously when Jonah uh, repented to some degree, uh, the storm immediately ceased. Well, at least for those who are on board the boat. But, uh, well... This storm, as you say, went on for two weeks and Paul was aware there was going to be danger and they, um, they actually went through it for that period of time. Um, mm -hmm. But as you said, he managed to get a friendship with the, um, with the commander and because at first they were wanting to kill all the... When the ship was obviously going to sink, they mm -hmm. wanted to kill the prisoners. But obviously, because he, he began to develop a relationship with Paul, yes, yes. then he stopped everybody from harming them. And Paul gave that assurance because the Lord, as a man of God, the Lord had already encouraged him and told him he would had to go to Rome. So therefore, if he was dead, he wouldn't get to Rome, would he? So he, he could have that assurance for the promises yes. of God that God was going to get him there. And he was, as 
Jenny was saying he walked in obedience. And because of his obedience, there was a similarity in that he brought yes. the others with him. So they mm -hmm. came to know and, and trust God. And especially mm -hmm. what happened later as we got yes. to the island of Malta. Um, yes. So there's a, a kind of a similarity. But obviously the whole thing is Paul's obedience. And Paul's... Yes. Even the, and the other thing that struck me, just as Jenny mentioned, was that even though there was a prophetic word to try and discourage him from going there because he said he would be bound, it would be persecution, mm -hmm. it, would, it wouldn't be easy. Yet, he was going by the revealed word of God to him rather than what others were saying out of their sympathy mm -hmm. and that naturalness right. of, oh, no, no, don't go into where there's trouble. Yes. But he was willing to go where he knew there was trouble because the Lord was leading him to share the gospel with the people in Rome. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Excellent. And uh, and of course, it is a great victory in the end. Um, of course, we know that Paul, they finally do get shipwrecked. Nobody is lost in the boat. They end up, of course, on the island of Malta. I've actually been there to St. Like Paul's Bay. They've named it after him. He gets bitten by a snake and doesn't die. That's one of the promises is in Mark chapter 16. Um, and so... I think, in conclusion, what I would say is that the world is looking for a people of faith. They're actually looking for a people who are not phased by what's going on. At the moment, of course, we've got the uh, the uh, Hamas-Israeli war going on, uh, a, a, a horrendous thing. Uh, and, of course, we pray for, for peace uh, yeah. there and an end to that conflict. But there are conflicts. That's a storm happening there. Um, but the thing is... What God's looking for, for, the world is looking for, is a people of faith uh, who um, who are not phased by the storms, like those guys on the boat with Wesley. Uh, and I think that that is what God is looking for us to be, those people who our faith is strong, we're hearing from God, and we can bring that kind of assurance and calm uh, to the world around us. And I think that really is um, the wonderful thing. There's a big contrast between Jonah running from God uh, and the storm that comes, but the storms that do come when we follow God, but the confidence we can have in them uh, that God will take us through. And it makes me think of Isaiah 43. You know, when you go, through, you know, don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You're mine. When you go through the waters, I'll be with you. When you go through the fires, uh, you will not be burned. And I think that's very encouraging for us that no matter what, as we're obeying God, whatever we go through, we know that he's with us. We know that he's called us uh, by by name. Um, Jenny, could you finish by just uh, saying a prayer for all those people that are listening? And Yes. Heavenly Father, we just pray for everybody who's listening to this. We pray a blessing over them, Lord. We pray that people will be able to understand that the only way that you can really weather the storms of life is put, by putting trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and reading the word and being led by the spirit we just pray lord that people have different uh, storms in their lives which is this was which is significant to them and whether it's a uh, to do with wars or it's a personal storm we just pray lord that people would reach out to you but us as disciples would be obedient to you and we would go out and tell people the good news about you so that they would know how to be equipped and how to be prepared for the storms of life that will come, but also to take glory in the fact that they know that they belong to you and you'll see us through the storm at the other end and life would be so much better then. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jenny. And I think we lost Karen there with her voice, but... Uh... <laughs> Uh, Are you back, sorry to Karen? say that, but uh, I'm back. I can uh, hear you. You're back. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. So, so uh, God bless you all. It's been wonderful to hear, and I've, I've certainly learned plenty from you guys um, uh, as well to encourage me in my faith journey. So, so be strong in faith, be strong in hope, and be strong in love. And uh, God bless you all. Amen. Thanks. Bye. 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 Take care, guys.